Dapat kumusta ko na. This afternoon, um, we will be talking about carbohydrates. Any ideas, you guys, as to what carbohydrate is all about? Can you can you can you see the screen now? I mean the screen share is there. Is yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Side. So, okay. Um, I first tempted in biochem, and I'm really not confident, and not just confident, but I am. Way, way beyond what it is. So just bear with me, guys. Oh, pala tak feeling yan kaya dito ako ng bossing. So what is carbohydrates? So carbohydrates is a simple term from the the word itself. Carbohydrates, carbo, carbon, and hydrates is water or hydrated carbon. So the basic formula for carbohydrates is C, H, and O. Carbohydrates, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We um, say that the ratio for that is one to one. So one carbon, two hydrogen, and one oxygen. So the older term for, or the older definition for carbohydrates is hydrated carbon, hydrates with the general formula of CHO, which is one to one. Um, it is the most abundant organic molecule in nature. It can be found and seen in anywhere. Basically, um, there's a saying that each year photosynthesis converts more than 100 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide and water into cellulose. And um, that is um, carbohydrates okay, and other plant products. It is an important structural It has an important structural metabolic rules, and um, it is synthesized okay, in animals from amino acids. It is distributed in plants and animals. So the most important example of carbohydrates is glucose. Pero may magkita ni nabati, ano? Glucose. So, glucose is the most important carbo. It is formed by hydrolysis of dietary starch and disaccharides, okay? Major metabolic fuel of mammals and the physiologic sugar since all carbohydrates are converted to glucose for further metabolism in the body. The most dietary carbohydrate that is absorbed into the bloodstream is in the form of glucose by hydrolysis of starch and other day satellites. It is also the precursor for synthesis of all other carb carbohydrates in the body. Um, it is termed glycogen for storage in animals and It can be found in nucleic acids, uh, the RNA, the DNAs that we have, the ribose and the deoxyribose. It can also be seen in milk, in lactose or synthesis of lactose in milk, in glycolipids, and combination of proteins to make 
glycoglycans. So this one is found in Harper's terminology is glycobiology, glycome, glycomics. So glycobiology is the study of the roles of sugars in health and disease. Glycome is the entire complement of sugars of an organism, whether free or in more complex molecules. Glycomics is an analogous term too for like genomics and proteomics. The comprehensive study physiological, pathological, and other aspects. So what are the classification of carbohydrates? To place it, um, the classification of carbohydrates, four major classifications of carbohydrates. Monosaccharides, um, first, saccharide, what is saccharide? Saccharide sugar from the Greek word, saccharin. So monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. So more or less, that's the whole thing that we, I would like. If there is something that I would like to impart to you today, it's at least those four. You know? So monosaccharide from the term again, mono and saccharide, sugar, one single unit of sugar, monosaccharide. Disaccharide, two single unit of sugar. So one plus another one, disaccharide. Oligosaccharide is a mixture of at least three to ten. Three to ten monosaccharides. So one plus one plus one, more than three, or three up to ten. While poly from the term poly, oligopoly is few, no, it means few, while poly means many. So, polysaccharide is um, more than 10. More than 10 saccharides or more than 10 sugar components or units. So, that's your four. Um, classifications of carbohydrates. Again, let's go back. Carbohydrates is hydrated or carbon or carbon that has water. Okay. Um, so the formula, general formula for that is CHO, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So what is monosaccharide? The monosaccharide is a single unit. It is the simple sugar. Um, it can't be hydrolyzed, um, but it can be condensed. It con once condensation happens, you add more. So it goes to disaccharide, oligo, and your poly. But the mono, because it's the, the simple single, um, carbohydrates it cannot be broken down uh, to another sugar. Okay, so it cannot be broken down to simple carbohydrates. It exists as an all dose or ketose, and it contains three to seven at least carbon atoms. So there is how to classify monosaccharides also. Um, monosaccharides are being classified also as to the number of carbons that it has with, with their. Um, formation or how do you call that the framework i guess i don't know if i'm saying the right term but just bear with me it's the uh component carbon that they have so if it's three it's called trios try for four carbons it's called tetros for five it will be pentos people so pentose six carbons would be hexose and seven carbons would be called heptose 
Okay, so try triostetros for four, five pentos, five carbons, six hexos, and seven is heptos. Okay, so that is classification of classifying monosaccharides as to the number of carbons that it has. But there's also um, what you call it um, as to the function or group function that it has um, as to um, if it's an aldehyde or it's in the ketone group. Okay, so aldehyde, the CHO part. While the ketone group is the carbon double band with, double band with oxygen or O. C, double band O, that's the ketone part. So if the uh, molecule carries with it the uh, carbon double band O, it's on the ketone group. And if it's in the CHO, it's in the aldone, uh, aldehyde group. So they call it, call it aldose for the aldehyde group and ketose for the ketone group. So basically, if you if you connect one like trio al, trio aldehyde or trio aldose, trios and also trio ketose. Okay and so on and so forth. So these are the classification of important sugars as to the um, functional group component of those or ketos. So triosis, glycerose, dihydroxy, um, dihydroxyacetone is the ketone part or the ketone type of the triose. In tetros, it is erythrose, and for ketone, it is erythrulose. For pentose, the ribose, then ribulose. For hexose, glucose, the most important one, glucose. And for ketone part, this, this the part is the fructose. For heptose, that's on the aldose, it's a glucoheptose. Yeah, glucoheptose or your cytoheptose. And your for the ketose part is the side of have to close. Okay, so as you can see here, trios, you have C, you know, three carbons, tetros, you have four carbons, pentose, you have five carbons, hexos, you have six, and heptose, you have seven carbons, so three, four, five, six, seven. But also because Carbohydrates, the, the general formula for carbohydrates is CHO, but it's hydrogen 2 and O, oh, like it's water H2O. So one carbon is, the ratio is 1 to 1, right? So one carbon, two hydrogen, and one oxygen. So if you'll notice, trios, you'll have three carbons and three oxygen, but you, and you will have six, double the number carbons okay but this does not hold um this is not hard and fast through also because there are molecules that somehow um follow this type of formula but they are not carbohydrates good example are your lactic acid acetic acid formaldehyde i guess follow the formula but is not, are not carbohydrates. So, and also there is a carbohydrate or there are carbohydrates that does not follow, but they are genuine sugars, like your deoxyribose yes. Does not follow the um, formula of CHO or one to one, but they are genuine sugars. So what is a disaccharide? Again, by the term itself, di means two. Saccharide is coming from the Greek word saccharin or sugar. So two sugar units. So if you add one sugar 
with one and one sugar, the term is condensation. If you break down one sugar or two sugar into one and one, it's called hydrolysis. So if you want to get monosaccharide from the disaccharide, the, the process is hydrolysis. But if you want the monosaccharide to add with another one, it's so disaccharide is condensation products of two monosaccharide units. So the examples of this are lactose. Lactose, maltose, isomaltose, sucrose, and trehalose. Um, what is important in disaccharide? By the way, um, I don't know. Oh, and then reducing and then reducing, guys. Yeah, disaccharides are can be classified as to a reducing sugar or a non-reducing sugar. Okay, so you have your lactose, maltose as the reducing sugar, and you have sucrose as a non-reducing sugar. So let's go to oligosaccharides. Sure, oligosaccharides are condensation products of at least three up to 10 monosaccharides. Um, so if you add monosaccharide with another monosaccharide with another monosaccharide, at least three of them, you call it now as an oligosaccharide. And then if you add more, add more, add more up to 10, still under the term oligosaccharide, but there are that says also that even the disaccharide can be a part of an oligosaccharide because it has a few um, sugar component okay but then again just for the purposes of clarification disaccharide is just to die so oligosaccharide can be the three to ten so it is a condensed products of three to ten monosaccharides and most are not digested by human enzymes so what are or what is a polysaccharide? The polysaccharide is a condensation product of more than 10 monosaccharide units. Um, basic here is the cl classification of your polysaccharide is just two basic ones. It's like it's called homo or hetero. So when we say homo polysaccharide, imagine this guys. Um, Example, then like glucose, you go to glucose. As a monosaccharide, glucose, you have glucose as a monosaccharide. And up with an alcaloid now because the halam and it adds up another glucose to Luna, so it becomes an oligosaccharide. But it adds, adds up more than 10 now. Same glucose component, glucose, 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 more than 10. Um, that's a homo polysaccharide, meaning there's only one, the same single sugar unit, okay, that has been added up as the chain. So homo polysaccharide is polysaccharide, but there's what you call a hetero polysaccharide also, which is um, different single unit of monosaccharides. So pwede siguro... Um, glucose with galactose and some other part, some, some other form of monosaccharide that compose more than 10 okay, in a chain. So that's the hetero polysaccharide. And there's also a way of knowing, uh, a way of classifying one from the other because one can be branched and one can be unbranched. So when it's just a long chain, simple, um, straight um, connection of polysaccharides is not, it's an unbranched. But if there's branching, bran branching or bands, no, that of course, 
not in a straight one, then it's the branched polysaccharide that can be hetero or homo. So condensation products are more than 10 monosaccharides. The unit examples are starches, dextrins. Okay, it can be linear or it can be branched polymers. It is sometimes classified as hexosans or pentosans, depending on the constituent monosaccharides, like your hexosis or pentosis. In addition to starches and extrins, foods contain a wide variety of other polysaccharides that are collectively known as non-starch polysaccharide. They are not digested by many enzymes and are the major component of dietary fiber. The examples are cellulose, <clears throat> which comes from plant cells, a glucose polymer, and inulin, the storage carbohydrate in some plants, or a fructose polymer. So here is the structure of glucose represented in three ways, at least the basic um, representation of uh, carbohydrates in three forms. So this one is the Fisher form or what you call the straight chain form. Okay, um, the carbons are there in the middle connected and then you have your hydrogen and oxygen inside or hydroxyl component. And then this one is the Hayworth formation, the ring formation. Um, it's called furanose, a uh, furan ring if there are only five. And this one is a pyran ring or a pyran pyranic ring. Okay, okay, six. Pyran for six and furan for five. And this one is the chair form. All of these are glucose, okay? All of these are glucose. They're just one and the same, except that they are represented in these three ways of um, formation. So, Fisher, Fisher, um, Hayworth formation, and the chair form. So this one is the isomerism, another way to classify the carbohydrates and to put names to it. Um, Magalenin sugat, carbohydrates, apelido. So, kung kapungkol, may daromel, may kapungkol niya, may balotingaran. So, siguro, I don't know, I'm just, it is just me talking. So, maybe that's how isomerism is. That's how I, I, I felt it was because you can now name more distinctly a carbohydrate from the isomerism, like the D and L isomerism. So the D and L isomerism, basic here is you just go to the carbon five. I don't know if I'm, but I think what is meant, um, somebody told me that you go to the terminal C or the last C and then the carbon before that, you try to look for the hydroxyl, okay? If the hydroxyl is on the right side, like this one, it's on the right side, it's a D. And this one is on the left side, it's on the, it's an L. So they are both in glucose, but this one is in the D glucose and this one is L. Glucose. It is the designation of sugar isomer as the D form, or its mirror image as the L form, that is determined by the sp spatial relationship to the parent compound of the carbohydrates. The three carbon sugar are glycerose, um, or the glyceraldehyde L and D forms of the sugar. Um, actually, it, it's in, it is also can be seen in, uh, it's there in your at harbors, okay? It is about the orientation of the H and OH group and on the carbon atom adjacent to the terminal alcohol carbon. So it's the carbon five, if it it's the glucose, okay? So if I think, okay, um, if it's a triose, so you, it's in the middle, what? Because the terminal part would be the last C, right? So for three carbons. So if it's the, Tetros type, 
then it's, it will be the carbon three. Okay, this one is glucose. It's a hexose, so we will look at the carbon five. Okay, just try to look at the OH. Now I need OH. OH. If it's on the right, it's the D, and if it's on the left, is on. It's the L. Okay, so I was a bit confused also because I was thinking that D stands for the dextro dextro type because in med in medicine the term for right is dexter or dextro the term for left is left I was thinking that's why it wasn't d and l but when you read farther on your harpers there's another one the photo isomerism which is the dextro rotatory and the levo rotatory type Okay, so this one is the DNL isomerism. Most of the naturally occurring monosaccharides are the sugars. Remember that. So this one is the most common occurring monosaccharides. And the enzymes responsible for the metabolism are specific for this configuration. Then probably yes. Maybe that is why this is the most common because it can be okay. There are enzymes that can metabolize this. And the L1. It would be hard to metabolize if there's no such a specific enzymes uh, that can metabolize this. So here is our yeah optical isom isomerization or isomerism. So optical isomer is the application of a polarized light, and there is rotation that can be seen in the molecule of the carbohydrate. So gesture rotatory means it rotates to the right. In level rotatory, it rotates to the left. So when we talk about rotates to the right, I think it's clockwise rotation. So when we talk about rotates to the left, it's the counterclockwise rotation. But it is not um, termed with a letter. Instead, it's termed with a plus or a minus sign. So if it's a level rotatory or the counterclockwise, rotatory um, effect then it's negative or minus sign and if it's on the right 